stop right there. Paul, Lucian, you receive the instructions in the dressing room. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourselves at all times. Touch them up, go to your corner. All set to go. You've heard all the talk and all the build-up to this fight. Froch looking for what might be the most exceptional performance of his career. He is the underdog here. The well-respected magazine Boxing Monthly has Boutte as number one in the world, even above Andre Ward. He's in the red trunks. The Romanian base now in Canada. South four with a big snappy jab and a booming left hand. And that's why Froch has to be a bit careful not to walk into that, because it is potentially a knockout punch, even though Froch has never, ever been stopped. And as far as we can detect, only flawed once in his career by Jermaine Taylor. He can't trade on that indestructibility. He's going to have to be a lot cuter than he was with Andre Ward, Jim. Yeah, d definitely. But he's going to have to impose himself on Boutte, maybe the, the, the way he didn't do against Ward. The way he boxed in the last couple of rounds against Ward, he's going to have to do that tonight. He's going to have to do it earlier. That wild stuff there from Carl, he's taking chances. They're letting his uh, right foot get in front of his left with that attempt. Now, the referee's going to be stripped. We'll find that out already. I mean, I didn't see too much, uh, too many rules being broken there. Yeah, no, did I, but Al Brown wanted to impose his authority straight away. The battle of the jabs is interesting here. If Boutte gets that south forward jab going, Froch could be in trouble. He has to bring his own left lead into play in this fight. Something, again, he couldn't do at all with Ward. Ward wouldn't let him. But you see Boutte moving in the anti-clockwise direction, getting his right foot outside Froch's left. That's the way a southpaw wants to move. That way, he's got balance, he's got a good shot. Beautiful left hook from Floyd, bang on the chin! And he wanted to hold on a bit after that landing as well, Butte. There was one fight on his record against a fellow called Andrade where he fell apart and was rescued by the referee. Some disgraceful refereeing. He got the win, but was given forever to recover. Well, Floyd is prepared to take chances, and that's what he's going to have to do tonight. There's Butte that, looking to respond. There's that big left hand coming in from Butte, but Froch has done okay so far in this opening round. They're definitely one shot buzz Boutte up a little bit. Some people do wonder still about his resilience in a long distance battle. I think Boutte came in tonight thinking Flores would be easy to catch with punches, but he's not. He does make basic mistakes defensively, but he's not easy to catch. And he's coming back with good counters here. Leaping in with the right hand, the right hand, usually the honey punch for anyone against the South Four, in theory, anyway. They'll have thought long and hard about how they're going to approach this, Robert McCracken, the trainer, and the team, and how to negate what Boutte usually does every time. And a good punch from Boutte. Well, I don't see a lot to split him again, good work from, from Fletch. Both taking chances, I think this is going to be better than even we expected. Walked onto a left hand in that exchange, Frosch, but I thought he did okay in that opening round. Just watch the punching on the break, okay, all right? Listen, you've got to move in and out. Carl, listen to me. Lighter on your feet, all right? You can hit a little bit, this fella. You've got to be a bit tidier. Yeah, I know, but don't give him nothing, all right? Down the middle, move your head. Come on, wake up. Come on, come on, switch on. Come on, deep breath. Come on, come on. Come on. Robert Put McCracken there in the corner with down. Carl Frost. You had his successes in that opening round. Yeah, he did a couple of clumsy things which will be dangerous. But I thought, OK, Boutte finished the round a bit better. But Second I thought Frost gave round as good two. as he got. And he tested Boutte's chin a couple of times, which is good. Five wins and two defeats in world title fights so far for Carl Frost. Sometimes he's done it in extraordinary fashion, like winning with 14 seconds to go against Jermaine Taylor away from home when he was losing the fight on the scorecards anyway. He does find a way to prevail, beaten only by Nick Kessler 
And last time out, rather outclass, we thought, by Andre Ward. Here he's trying to let that big left go. Boutte. This is as deep as Boutte's ever been in as well. It's the first time he's fought one of the elite men in the division. He's beaten some useful men, but not men in the Frotch class. Yeah, and he's not finding it all that easy to get into punching range. I know it's early days, but uh, I don't see much difference in the speed of Boutte to the speed of Frotch at the moment. Frotch keeping a cool head, just keeping that jab ever ready. Not getting his jab into play at all so far, Boutte significantly. He's hardly landed it, he's looking at that left hand, he's very, very fast with that, and he's got a good repertoire as well. Watch uppercuts to the body, that's a big shot for Boutte and has been in the past. Yeah, that's the big worry for Frotch. I mean, against an orthodox fighter, that left hand up through the middle to the body lands so much easier, Frotch will have to be wary of that. Boutte started this round positively, a couple of good shots home already. Very little in it so far. Talking about careful pressure. Frotch. Boutte was hot! Heavy. Boutte was hot, Marion! Yeah, he was, I think, too. Again, he wanted to just grab on for a second. That was a thumping right hand there. Boutte did not like that. Frotch has twice already shown his the power to trouble him. Grounds for optimism, possibly, for Frotch. Looking to disprove those who have seek to write him off and with this massive crowd or nearly all of them anyway right behind him here so well, he's already beaten andre durell in a close one and in a thriller too he's not pascal the heads coming together frotch getting the bell though they weren't told to break so frotch was right to throw that left hook this is a good round for frotch and again he gets his jab into play there the left jab from frotch the referee's going to take one in a minute if he keeps diving in in the middle of some of the exchanges that he did just back then. Boutte can't get himself close. Little chopping right hand, but Frotch comes back with a better one. Good right hand from Frotch as well there too. And again he stops Boutte from thumping that left hand into the body. If he can plant doubts in Boutte's mind, that'll be a big thing, because this guy's been oozing confidence for a few years. Welcome back to Nottingham as we continue this exciting IBF Super Middleweight title bout between Carl the Cobra Frotch and Lucien Boutte. Seconds out, round three. This is the third round. Carl Frotch of Nottingham in Nottingham in the black trucks trying to become a three-time world champion here and to dethrone the unbeaten Lucien Boutte. Huge television audience in Canada. Sugar Ray Leonard is here working for Canadian TV for this fight. You know, the, the Booty's boxing at the moment is a bit amateurish. You know, like, talking out with the punches, feeling out with the punches. He's not snapping them out the way Frotch is doing. Put with the left hand there. Frotch trying to move away all the time from that booming left hand that Boutte possesses. But Boutte is trying to draw leads from Frotch, and Frotch is not obliging. So he's having to step right in and let the left hand go to get some punches home. Frotch, KJ, and clever. Frotch with the badge of his beloved Nottingham Forest on his tracks on the side of him. Anyway, took a couple of left hands, but then a Hot him again. as he worked close in. Fast punch and buzzed him up again there. And Frotch goes to work again here. And covers in right hand. wasn't in his script and could this be a big big night again for the amazing Carl Frotch his legs are gone his legs are gone he's, he's all over the place there's still a minute and a half to go in can he get through this he's just looked as if he's had a bit of a dodgy chin here Boutte and these quicker punches that Frotch has been working on in training are working for him at fast Combination. They weren't loading up with power when they did it in the gym, but I think he is in here, you know, because he knows he can hurt this guy now, and he's wading away here, thumping them in, Frotch. It's all Frotch early. And a big uppercut with the right hand that time. 
Bouge just can't get going, and he might even be taken out if he's not careful here. Finds a left hand by way of counter. He's in crisis, the champion. This is tremendous work from Thrush. He's walking through the boot. He's gone. This is a big round for Thrush. Boot coming back into a lot, but now his legs are, are weak. So there's no great power in his shot. It's tremendous onslaught from Thrush. Some fighters in it again. He's hurt him. Three points combination faster. Oh, what fools we were to write off Carl Thrush. This is amazing. Big combinations. Referee takes a close look. Nothing coming back from Butte, who needs that bell and needs it badly now. He's having to show some guts. The bell's coming up. It's an incredible round. It's a massive round. That's a ten watch. Ian, that's a ten round. Welcome back to Fight Night Classics and the clash between Froch and Butte for the IBF Super Middleweight title. Seconds out, round four. It's a great round for Froch, but now he's got to do it all again. A minute's rest. Was that enough for Butte? How long before Froch? rocks him again and gets him going again. It's not at all what most people were predicting here. It's another tale of the unexpected from a real tough guy fighter in front. See, it's when Frosch springs on to Boutte, he cannot do anything about it. When he tries to box his way in carefully, he doesn't get there, but when he springs on to him, that's when he creates the damage. There's that left hand, but the trouble is, you see, Frosch has got an absolutely fantastic chin. I've seen that time and time again. So the power that might have taken out other opponents might not take out him. Well, this is a dream start for Carl Froch. I thought he'd have been chasing this fight by the halfway stage. Quite the opposite, he's dominated. Repeat it, never got the jab into play so far. Butte, not once. And that's been vital for Froch. Just reaching with the jab rather than snapping at that time. Froch has to keep the concentration levels all the time. I think this is the kind of opponent who's dangerous every second he's in there, Butte. Well, I think he's a worried man at the moment. I think he would like a couple of quiet rounds just to get his head clear. Look, every time Froch takes it to him, he takes it away from him. Butte did get him with a good, solid looking left hand, and another one for the body again. No effect on Froch, you just. Sucks them. I'll tell you something, they thought the Butte camp that speed was the key. They thought they were way too fast for Froch. But the hand speed of Froch has troubled Butte right the way through. It's the fact that he's moving right in with the punches, he's not reaching with them, he's actually charging into Butte. So Butte can't get set for counter punches and Froch getting power into the short punches. Good work here from Butte coming back into things a little bit. But how soon before? Crotch gets him going again. It's a long way back in a way for Butte here. This is the kind of crisis he hasn't really had since the Andrade fight late on in the game. Those big booming shots on the right hand, Butte took that as well. Butte cannot continue to take these shots. He's going to get knocked out here. He's out of it already. His legs seem to be gone, but he sucks it up, and his conditioning has got him through to this point. But Froch can smell blood here. Oh, and a big shot. Rocks the head. Is the referee stopping the, the bell? Oh, it's, it's the, the bell. bell. It's the bell. In there. I thought for a moment there the referee was going in to stop. There's some damage by the eye. Hardly knows where he is, Butte. Couldn't find his way back to the corner in all that. We couldn't hear the bell. Such was the noise. There were so many punches going in, you wondered if the referee was going to dive in. <laughs> referee taking a look at the blood by the left eye as well. Every time Froch lands cleanly, he blasts Butte right out of there. He cannot handle the power or the strength. I mean, another dominant session. Okay, he didn't dominate for the whole round. 
Matei cannot continue to Gordon take these shots. Second. He's gone, his legs have gone. This is all down to what kind of condition and powers of recovery does he have? He hardly knew the way back second to the down. corner then. Round five. A minute might not have been long enough, I don't think. Here's round five. Is Carl Frotch here on the brink of something absolutely extraordinary? He has been an underrated fighter, there's no doubt about that, particularly earlier on in his career. There's that blood around the left eye now of Butte, who's showing great courage to stick in with this. Yeah, but there's no question who's in the driving seat, is there? None at all. Absolutely none. Frotch is in fire, so whatever Butte throws at him, he'll just walk straight through it. I think you said it there. It's a Nottingham Forest fire, isn't it? That's what we've got here. Oh, it's a right hand! The referee might have stepped there. It's no, he stopped in, he's done surely. He goes sacks against the ring, and he's going to give a count. There are people who've got in the ring. He can't go up, Bute. He can't surely. No, there, Eddie Hearn got in the ring, and he's all over. The test is going to end. It's all over. It's over. Carl Frost once, twice, three times a champion. Still the sheriff of Nottingham. shows you the difference between boxing in the first division and boxing in the Premier League. Wonderful performance from Carl Frosch. People asking, has he come to the end of his career? Quite the opposite, that is the best performance of his life. Saved it for a special night in Nottingham. There's Rachel Cordingley, his model partner. Eddie Hearn, who got into the ring. The referee hadn't actually stopped the fight at that time, by the way. He was still delivering a count. And then amid the chaos, the referee didn't make it exactly clear, but it's over. He's definitely over the corner, but walked over. LaRousse, the trainer, and retired Boutet anyway. It's all academic. What a win. That was one of the greatest wins ever I've seen from a British boxer. And against the bookmakers' odds, too. Yep, and it was from start to finish. Did not lose a round up to that point. Dominated, I gave him a 10 8 round. And, and the third, complete domination. Wonderful performance. We knew it was top league, but I did not believe he still had a performance like that in him. He told us he would do it. We'll believe him the next time. Confounds the critics and proves that this is a fighter who will go down in British boxing history and will have a legacy. What an amazing, tough guy fighter. Wonderful tactics, huge credit to Robert McCracken, the trainer in Froch, for devising these. He was just way too much for Butte. That punch finished, and the referee could have stepped in any time now, and Butte was on the ropes. The referee must have decided that the ropes were keeping up, so it was a knockdown, but this was dangerous in here, entering the ring. Everybody thought he'd stop the fight, but then the referee started counting. But there was no way Butte could recover from that. But this time, his seconds had already walked into the ring to call it off. But look at the punches. Froch would just not be denied tonight. Butte, such an emphatic winner so often in Montreal. You said it, Jim. He moved into the Premier League tonight in with one of the top guys and Froch took him to school and blasted him out of the argument in five rounds. Well, you were told there's a return clause. Do you think he'll want it? Well, that's a very good question. There is a return clause. They can do it again in Montreal, but Froch just looks as if he packs too much power for this fella. Referee, I think, was the referee should have stopped it there. That, that, that was silly referee, even bothering to count there. OK, the ropes kept him up, so it was a knockdown. But wave that off. The man is going to be seriously damaged. Just wave it off right then and there. I can see why Eddie Hearn, the promoter, ran in the ring like that. You see in the background, the referee still hasn't stopped the fight officially. He's delivering a count. While he's staggering, yeah. While Eddie he's staggering Hearn shouldn't actually ropes. be in the ring, but the referee's body language was very confusing. The trainer walks over, says, look, don't bother with all this, we're retiring him anyway to save him. I mean, really, the referee should have stopped the fight before. But what a win for Carl Frosch. That was fine, tingling stuff. Does yeah. fight Andre Ward again after that? Yeah, but with that attitude, I 
this because the tide takes him out. <laughs> yeah, but back on this SS, Cam Koch is won again. The thing is, he can choose who he wants to fight. He's the money man now, he's the attraction. Mikel Kessler, the very good Dane, who beat Froch, one of only two men to beat him, is here tonight. I know he's just moved up and had a winner, light heavy, but you could see those two doing it again, couldn't you? Maybe that's a, here. That's the fight Froch is desperate for. In Nottingham, yeah. That, that's a fight Froch has been... Since he lost the first time, he's never accepted that, so that's a fight that could be if Kessler fancies it after what he's seen tonight. Just fabulous from Carl Froch. An incredible performance, what a performance he gave the fans here. They will never, ever forget it. And by the way, neither will we. Ladies and gentlemen, timekeeper Andrew East has recorded a time of one minute and five seconds of the fifth round. Your winner, and the new... A standing ovation from Nottingham's crowd, one of the greatest performances by a British boxer. Carl Froch, a three-time champion of the world, is now crowned IBF Super Middleweight King. Let's join him ringside with Adam Smith. Carl Froch, an absolutely scintillating performance. A three-time champion of the world. Has it ever got any better than this? It's still sinking in, to be honest. It's absolutely fantastic. The support, I just want to make a big thank you to all the fans for coming here because it's, it's late in the morning. Um, people have really turned out for me. But no, it's still sinking in. You know, after the Andre Ward defeat, I was very, very deflated, to say the least. But, you know, things wasn't right out there. No excuses. I got beat by the better man on the night. But I was here tonight to put right or wrong. And I came in this ring more determined than I've ever came before. I've, I've listened to Robert McCracken, my coach, from day one to day, whatever it is, in, in 12 months. And um, he never gets it wrong. When he tells me what to do and I listen, I always get it right, you know. And I've, I've, been, I've, been, um, I've been guilty of switching off in the past. But tonight I was very switched on, focused, determined. I felt like a million dollars for the last two months. I've been on the way and I came here to do a job. And I was so focused from, from in the changing rooms earlier, from round one right through. If it had gone 12 rounds, it would have been 12 rounds of that. I was just on it, on it tonight. On I tell you what, you looked a billion dollars in the ring. You've been on the road for three years. You've tackled the best, Lucian Boudet undefeated, and you've done this. Some accomplishment, Carl. Unbelievable. A lot of people wrote me off. A lot of people on, um, on the, you know, on the punditry. A lot of people in the boxing magazines now. Are you were a big underdog. They're rewriting the script. They've got Lucian Boudet ranked at number one. They've got me ranked at number four, so I want to see that rectified. And um, the bookies as well, the bookies got it wrong, like I said, the would. So a lot of people in Nottingham have made a lot of money on me because, you know, the odds were great. And I'm here tonight to just put a show on, win this IBF title, and that's exactly what I've done. Sometimes, Carl, you admit you're slow out of the blocks tonight. It was fast, beautiful jab, the movement correct. You outboxed the boxer. I could not afford to be lazy, flat-footed, arms down, stiff head, I had to have my head moving, the feet had to be in and out. I've been listening to Rob, I've been training with all the top amateurs, you know, and when I've got the guru in my corner, there's nothing can go wrong as long as I listen to him. And I listened to him, like I said, for the last 12 weeks. Let's bring the guru in. He's understated, undervalued. Rob McCracken, tactically perfect. Yeah, he boxed fantastically well, he trained really hard. Um, I mean, he lost in Atlantic City before Christmas, but things weren't right. Um, maybe down the line we can put that right. Ward's a great fighter, but Carl Froch is a great fighter. I think Carl Froch proved him and Ward are the best two at the division by a country mile. He's almost 35. He's been in with them all, but he looked the best ever. Yeah, he's a fantastic specimen. He doesn't gain weight. He's, he's tremendous to work with. He's got to be right. He's got to be focused for a fight, and he'll deliver. There's Mikel Kessler out there, another great super middleweight. There's some great fights out there, but let, let's give Carl Fretch some credit. He's been underrated in this country, and I think it's dreadful. He's one of the best fighters we've ever produced in these lands. A fantastic boxer. Hear, hear to that. Eddie Hearn, the proud, emotionally exhausted promoter. Unbelievable, you know. I talked about Carl Fretch. He's a friend, you know, he's a warrior. We knew this was all or nothing tonight. You know, you try not to put pressure on yourself like that, but this was a last chance saloon for Carl Froch, and it meant so much to him. 
I want to thank the people of Nottingham for coming out. The support is incredible. And, uh, you know, we're contracted to go and rematch on uh, Lucian Butte. We'll do it in a heartbeat. You know, that was a comprehensive beating that Carl Fritsch put on. Fritsch put on. And he's three-time champion in the world, baby. <laughs> baby. A wonderful night, obviously, for Team Frotch. And will you take the rematch? Will you, I mean, you, you know, you, will he take the rematch? Listen, we're contractually obligated to take the rematch. In Canada. You're right. Well, they want to take the rematch. That was a, a real one-sided affair. We'll go away. He deserves a family with his holiday, or a holiday with his family. I don't really care which one. I can't believe it. We're over the moon. It's a proud, proud day for England. I'll tell you what, we've had boxing on Sky Sports for 20 years. Frank Bruno beating Oliver McCall at Wembley. Ricky Hatton dethroning Costas you back in 2005. I think we rank it right up there, do you? I do, yeah, he's a great fighter. You know, I had to take him very seriously. That's why I did, that's why I did the business. Are we talking about Luton Buto? We're talking about Carl Froch. Yeah. All right, okay. I'm the man, yeah. I want to give big, big respect to Luton because, you know, he's a great champion, undefeated world champion. And everybody's saying how great he was and how tough he was, how he can punch. Let me tell you, he can punch. He hit me with some good shots in there. But I took them and I came back strong and I did what I had to do. I can't say anymore. I'm just feeling so elated and so fantastic, so happy. Eddie Hearn, he's, he's brought me here and got this place packed out as well as I have. Rob McCracken, it's not just me in there. I know Rob climbs down the steps when the bell goes, but I do what he tells me. So that performance, I'm, I'm giving it to Rob. I want to ask you one more thing. What's the secret, what's deep inside the Carl Froch arsenal to keep you performing fight after fight? You know what, I've got the desire, I've still got the desire. I have um, conversations with Eddie Hearn at length and his dad Barry and um, you know, they talk a lot of sense and they talk from the heart and so does Rob as well for that matter. And he goes in there and because of the people I've got around me, that's what drives me on. I've got my little boy Rocco, I'm fighting for him, fighting for my beautiful partner Rachel. I've got a fantastic family so tonight I came here to, to do it for myself, nobody else, and that was the difference tonight. I had to prove to myself because it was all or nothing. If I lost tonight, I was going to announce my retirement. That's how close it was. But with a performance like that, I'm just so excited about the future, it's unbelievable. I can't think of a more deserving fighter who has now written his name in British boxing history forever. Well done, Carl. Thank you, thank you very much.